Right now, you're probably thinking, boy, am I glad I left the kids at home for this episode. Am I the only one that can hear that? There's The fucking mail truck always has no muffler on it. Drives me crazy. It's one of the few sounds that can penetrate my fortress of, of solitude here. Mail, and the mail lady, she's a sweetheart, too. It's not her fault. Not at all. It's the U.S. fucking government's fault. Ah, damn it. That drives me crazy. Would you like to learn from those that are taking their lives, their businesses, and their passions to the next level? Best-selling author of Speak Easy and master connector Lou Diamond is here to connect you to some of the most inspiring and amazing people on this planet. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome, listeners, back to Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. This is a special Thrive Loud episode. It actually isn't really a Thrive Loud episode, although we're not exactly sure if it was meant to be or it just kind of ended up becoming one. I go into this detail because this episode we have pulled from the Nice Guys on Business podcast with Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. It seemed that Doug knew that I was going to be a guest on his program to help promote my new book, Speak Easy. However, Strickland didn't know, so he showed up anyway and figured it was a chance for the two of them to be on Thrive Loud. So to make things easy and everybody happy, we put the episode on the Nice Guys on Business podcast, where you can find on episode 1321, and here on Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. Hopefully you'll enjoy this conversation of the three of us having a conversation, which is at the heart of what Speakeasy is about. So sit back and relax and enjoy this fun episode with Doug Sandler, Strickland Bonner, and yours truly here on Thrive Loud. So tell me, when the time is right, will you be ready for the nice guys on business? Oh yeah. Running a business is hard. Being a business leader is even harder. The nice guys bring in top industry pros to help your business prosper in a tough world. Get real advice from real people to get you real results today. Now it's time for the nice guys on business. Here's your hosts, Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. There, right? <laughs> so the question, Lou, is are we interviewing you or are you interviewing us today? Uh, you know, that that is always a question in your show, because at least when the two of you guys talk, uh, the one thing I do know is we will not be talking about things that come from the mouth to the anus, which is what I heard. <laughs> uh, Strickland probably hasn't heard the episode Oh, my yet, God. Yeah, ever. so JJ filled in for you, Strick, I guess, in the... Uh, oh, oh, yeah. that Was that last week's? No, that would be she was JJ. She was playing Regis or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, and of quite. course, it was a nice guys on business episode, and I don't listen to those. You know, I'm usually on, so I, <laughs> no. Why that was I listen a, to my own show. No, no that no, was I, that was NGF. That was nice guy fuckery episode. That was a yeah. Friday episode. I think you were. Um, I, I think, as I understood it, you were on a date, Strickland, or something like that. Right? Is that I right? think I was. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I was out yeah. on a date. It was not I, a terribly successful date, but stuff happens. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, nice guy community. You may, you may recognize, or you may not recognize that voice possible. in the background. That is the one and only Lou Diamond. He is with us today. Now, Lou has recently come up with, or come out with, or published. Is it, is it out yet, or it's coming out? It's coming out. On September 27th, September 27th um, but I've, I've got a few select Whoa. copies in my hand, which actually I believe there should be one in, in your house. I, I think I think it did arrive yeah. yesterday. I was out of town and and I got in from Santa Barbara Airport. The book is called Speak Easy, Connect with Every Conversation. Lou Diamond is the author. Sometimes that promising lead turns out to be a bust. Sometimes that first date does not uh, lead to a second one. The sales pitch falls flat to land on the client. Uh, but what if each and every one of those conversations that you had actually could land with a client, uh, could land on um, a date that leads to a second? Or even better, what if you could get laid as a result of having Lou Diamond right. in, in, your say, back, Lou, was, in your back your, pocket? Your question about was I on a date the other night? It was more than personal. You were working a segue in because you're a talented guy like that, segueing into your book. I was trying to think, did Strickland utilize the the methods of speakeasy to navigate the conversation in a way that turned out for him to be able to connect, engage, and win? And win in that particular case might have 
been something a little. All right, well, Lou, now so that I know <laughs> that this is more than just a book for sales, it can actually exactly. help me land a date, um, a second date. I'm going to have to read it now because Doug and, does all the sales. You know, I don't deal with sales. And the other guy that you may not ever recognize his voice if you're listening to this on a Monday episode when you're listening, that is that is actually the co-host and my partner, Strickland Bonner, who yes. you never hear on Monday. Strickland, how many Monday episodes do you think you have done through the last seven years? A handful. I could count them all in one hand. I thought Lou was actually interviewing us. That's why I was well, here. But well, what's the, <laughs> oh, he wouldn't show up for me, Lou. But he'd no, show up for you. No, of course I not. think it's going to be one of those ping pong tennis matching in, <sighs> in interview shows because I, the reason I wanted Strickland to be here, aside from that, is because it actually is very relevant as to what Speakeasy is about and and some of the inspiration. Let me clarify that. Just some of the inspiration. If Strickland wasn't, oh my God, I thought of Strickland. Well, well Strickland heard Speakeasy. He thought he was going to get a drink today. So. Right, well, exactly. <laughs> well, that was part of it. By the way, and as Strickland, as Strickland knows, it, it'll take him four years until I actually can get him the alcohol to the, to where he lives. <laughs> but you did finally get it to me. And I, I still I, have and, it in my liquor and, cabinet. Thank and, you let's very get, much. Let's give a shout out. There's some Kohana rum. Kohana shout rum. Out. Oh you, my you really gosh. Jason so, Brown will be happy. He's so, so Lou, so tell me, you know, not that I want to start with the end in mind, but I, we should reverse engineer this. What would be a success as a result if this happened today as a result of you being on this show? That way we can kind of gear up for it over the next 20 minutes as we talk. So that every one of your listeners is going to, you know, buy, pre-order Speakeasy. We okay. would obviously be that. They can go to speakeasybook.com. They can go to thriveloud.com. As you guys can also see, by the way, we've up Great at yeah, all. The check you out. Look and feel. And where is the green room? Where is your green room? Well, Why well, is it so no longer moved. green? Yeah. So I got, we can give that update because I, I, we moved, we sold our house a, just about a year ago and we are in a rental at least for one more year. Strickland can relate to this experience. Yeah. And, and then we're going to be right homeless. Now. Then we're going to be homeless because the real estate market is not cooperating, but it's starting to, <laughs> as I understand, I, at least I hope. So your one year plan is going to be like a seven year rental plan at, yeah. at a, a greatly elevated pricing and rentals too. It's it's really difficult because Strickland might not relate to this, but Doug does. Jews don't rent so well. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, you know where they do rent well. Jews really don't know. We don't know how to fix things. Which is why, by the way, which by the way is why rentals are great well the jews should be renting all the time now. i know i know it's really it's a it's kind of it, it's hurtful for for the jewish uh for the for all of our tribesmen because while they want to own and get the equity they don't want to have to fix any shit so. exactly. <laughs> Although, they don't can i tell you one bad thing yeah. about rentals that i'm dealing with right now our refrigerator died. I'm, I'm oh, renting a house right now. Like the full size refrigerator died, and I'm, I'm going back and forth with the the, uh, comp, the the property management company. And finally, they said to me, "The owner is not inclined to replace the refrigerator right now." And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" Well, I looked at the lease. There's nothing in the lease that says <gasps> they have to provide a refrigerator. Oh my goodness! So oh. I went and bought a little baby fridge because I need to buy a fridge for my new house, but I'm not buying a full size fridge and moving it and that, shit like that. But I want to show you the one I got. It's really yeah. cute. You got a, a college, my, a college. Uh, <laughs> I said Avanti. Yeah, but you got to look at it. It's like oh my god, it's like a green. it's like a college refrigerator. That's yeah, right. It's a seafoam retro green that I got at Best Buy. For I like can't. Can you send me what is coming out of the top of that? It looks like a smokestack. What is that? No, it's a glass. <laughs> <laughs> there now is. Oh, on top of Strickland, where are you going to store your your uh, Tyson anytizers? They don't have that doesn't have a big enough freezer to put them in there. Where are you going to? No, do it them? has just big enough a freezer. It, it fits my anytizers and, and a little bit of ice, and that's it. <laughs> Hey, but so, you do so, you do have the ice maker though. Mm -hmm. We'll get to you no. in a second. Just stand yeah, by. Who cares about me? <laughs> stand by. This is why I wanted Strickland on the show because the dynamic is spectacular. I I, I don't think all of your uh, regular interview folks get to appreciate the dynamic that the two of them have. So no, I, I just had a wonderful interview with a woman. Her name is Peggy Scott. She's an image consultant and she does a lot of a lot of the stuff that we probably should really work on ourselves, but we we probably don't do it. She's like, yeah, you got to think about the clothes you're wearing. I'm like, I like wearing the same t-shirt every fucking day that I possibly can. Lou, your, your book's called Speakeasy. The first one that you wrote was called what? Master the Art of Connecting. All right. What, in, what, what possibly enticed you to okay. want to write a second book? The thought of writing No More Mr. Nice Guys, which would be the sequel to Nice Guys Finish First, would, which would is just for title. me, just I can't imagine writing another book. So what's really interesting, I distinctly remembered you saying that to me and asking me the question, you know, I, I'm, why would I ever want to write another book? Because it is writing a book is arduous and, and the effort to promote it is even 
just Ar- arduous, more ridic- arduous, <laughs> more arduous. And, uh, and I didn't want to write a book unless I actually had something to write about. And while I don't have, what are we up to now? Like 13,600 episodes or something like 1300 episodes on. Yes, yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. So, so we're right at 800 at Thrive Loud and, and, Throughout the the growth of the show and, and utilizing podcasting as a way to have incredible conversations and having connection work be the focus of what I speak and consult about, I was hovering around something that wasn't actually hitting me. And it took someone else to explain this to me. And both of you guys do this well. The reason I wanted Strickland to be here too is uh, conversation is an incredible piece of content. And we don't think of it as such. We think of podcasts as we want guests to come on the program. We think of uh, the talk show host that we see at night because it's a talk show host, right? Mm -hmm. But when, when you think about every single connection you've ever made in your life, it all begins with a great conversation. That's the, ep- that's the epicenter. When, where, where does a connection begin? It begins with a great conversation. The two of you at I some agree. point or another agree. met whenever it was. The guests that you meet and interview all the time, Doug, you're establishing incredible connections with them. Um, and Strickland, all the dates that aren't working so well, we're going to work on some of those conversations. <laughs> I think there's, I think there's a, a certain amount of, of art and finesse that goes into the conversations. And without that, I agree with you. I think that you that people could have... I don't remember the expression, but it's something like you could have a great product, but deliver it poorly and you'll fall flat. If you could have a horrible product, but deliver it well and and be successful at it, which is amazing to me. So when I thought about the fact that if a conversation is where every connection begins, but we all know that not every conversation we have is great. I asked a more powerful question. What if it was? What if every single conversation you had was incredible, was engaging, led to another conversation in business, led to the sale in relationships, led to Strickland getting laid in, (laughs) in, in your, in your friendships, brought people together and your family solved problems. And I started to say, there's a lot of lessons that I know I've learned. And I know the two of you have learned Mm -hmm. from being behind this microphone paired with the way that we have conversations with everyone that we encounter. And I realized that there was a tremendous amount of lessons from what we've learned as podcasters behind this, in this forum, what some of the best conversationalists in the world have been doing for years and that we, whether we know it or not, have probably learned a thing or two from them. And I realized that this is the stuff that I'm really good at as are you guys, some of the best, actually, I would actually argue. I, I could listen to you guys talk about literally anything. And, and I really what we do, do on and Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I said to myself, and this is why I wanted the two of you here. I go, this is a perfect example of how conversation is content. And if we think about conversation a little bit differently and that every chance we have to have a conversation is a gift that this is the thing that we should be working on because this is where people can actually focus on. And I want to make it clear. It has nothing to do with what you said. And it has nothing to do with the expertise or the content or who you have on the show. It has nothing to do with anything you have to do. It has everything to do with how you need to be. Well, how do you change any of that? Like, like say, say somebody arrives at this conversation or a conversation just doesn't know what, where, do you, where the starting point even is. What, like, give me a pointer that I can share with the, somebody so, in our so, community. So here's a perfect pointer. I do, one of the things I always do before I do every interview or even before I had to talk to you clowns, because I wasn't sure if I was going to be interviewing <laughs> or not, <laughs> is I connect my voice, V-O-I-C-E. And this is part of the sound check or the, the show prep. And by the way, the book Speak Easy goes from intro to outro, um, all through the flow of what mm. you and I go through in a show. Way, way to put it together in the form of a, of a podcast episode. That's good. And, and also keep it this way, that the Speak Easy um, analogy is applicable to the 100-year-old place where we used to get our little drinks. And there's a lot of references, uh, things like mocktails, which is actually practicing. I thought it was referring uh, to Vic- Victoria's Vix. I thought it was <laughs> we used to go after our band gigs and DJ right. gigs. 
So, uh, so in connect your voice, uh, before every conversation, before every time I step on stage, before every time I meet with my clients, I connect my voice and I actually do this as my routine. I visualize how I believe that conversation should go. I come in with a sense of appreciation of the opportunity to have a conversation because every conversation is a gift. The I is I know the identity I have to be in that role. If I'm the host of the show, I know the identity to step in. If I'm coming on to nice guys on business, I have no idea. I'm really sure what I'm doing. It's gonna it's gonna be a shit show, which is what fuckery is all about. Um, And C and E is charisma and energy. Uh, Charisma I have to bring who I am specifically, and you guys do it all the time. You guys always bring yourselves, and it's it's a phenomenal thing to to listen to because (laughs) your quirkiness and who you are, and each one of your things comes out. But that's what people are drawn to. And energy is. You have to raise the bar a little bit in every conversation because nobody wants to connect with a dud. Mm. So, so you, if you bring that before I, I do that, so anytime I enter a conversation, if I think about connecting my voice and, and I want to go to that, oh, appreciating the opportunity. If you go in knowing that that conversation is a blessing, think about the way that you're going to be, right? Think about just, I'm going to be more likable. I'm going to be more friendly. I'm going to actually be like warmer. And that's somebody who you want to hang out with. You don't want to go in as an asshole. You don't want to go in with, I'm a know-it-all. You don't want to go in with being a complete dick. You want to go in bringing the best of yourself. And the way to do that is to throw yourself out of the equation. Be appreciative that I get to talk to Doug and Strick, which is freaking awesome. I'm going to give you a, guys an example. The guy that kicked off this show, who I hope, does he still kick off the show? Yeah, every okay. episode, Steve-O is right there. So, so I, I had a speaking gig in Indianapolis and there was no chance in hell that I was going to go to that town without missing him. And he took, Steve, thank you for dinner. It was delicious. It took me to a really cool place and he wouldn't let me pay, which he was very surreptitious. By the way, he did the old thing that, you know, when you do what you're like- Slip the uh, credit card to yeah, the yeah. waiter. Totally did it. He totally I did that. it. I was so pissed. But we had some killer cocktails, by the way. Crazy little place in Indianapolis. We should probably know the name. Anyway, when we're there, he was explaining to me some of the conversations that he was having from his show, um, The VO Hustle, and how he was now coaching all of these different people who want to become voice artists. And all of a sudden, he's back into it. Strick, how long did it take us to convince Steve-O to have a podcast? Forever, oh my probably. gosh! No, right? he, he was. We, as soon as we started talking about it, he's like, "This is a great idea. I can totally use this." We just had to help him get rolling with it, <laughs> and and he because he kept saying, "Yeah, I don't have time. I don't have the. I don't." I don't and we're oh like, when we finally got him started, that was probably two years ago now, and he's at he least couldn't be more. Thankful. And not only is he happier, but it's become a way for him to get new business. Yeah, of course. But he he now said to me when I told him what Speakeasy was about, I appreciate conversations now more than ever. Because I now understand that what Strickland and Doug were trying to do is to get me to have a show. What these listeners are trying to do is learn from my expertise. And by the way, who wouldn't want to have a conversation with him because he's got like the voice of God or whatever you want to call it. Well, I, I, I love the whole idea of having these conversations and sharing an educational moment with a community that's listening. But for Strickland and I, as we've talked about this for years with this strategy, you know, our guest, a gold strategy, that guest seat is a golden opportunity for, yeah. for, for, you know, for fulfilling something that is missing in our business. And while we do share some great things with our community, we, we do this selfishly. We get a lot more out of it than we even feel like our community gets now, out of it. Now, there's, for the record, there's nothing wrong with it selfishly. You are giving of your time this this podcast has a production cost of the time of strickland and and doug and everybody that's behind turnkey to do this and make like it clear. seven You're, seven cents right strickland is that yeah, what, that what we <laughs> figured out for strickland my time about seven or eight is, cents? is that is that patreon account still paying you guys for me? oh my <laughs> gosh that would be great <laughs> Wait, if we got those two dollars from sean carpenter as we had gotten for a long time we, man we would be sitting on like 20 bucks right now <laughs> mm-hmm. the, the, so when you go back to your original question doug when everybody came to me and said, Lou, you're not only a very good podcaster, you're not only a great speaker, but your ability to have conversations with people. I literally feel good after having a conversation with people. And Mm -hmm. I will say this, I'll say this more for Doug, for the listeners who listen to this program, I would be willing to get up those thousands of guests that have been on this program. They all do the same. They, there is a sense of gratitude that you have, even though you're selfishly potentially want to do business with them. That's okay. Because that's not your that's not where you're in right. the moment. In right. the moment, you're appreciating the opportunity that you have that guest on that show. Because by the way, some of these guests are incredible. Like I think agree. about all the incredible gifts that we've been given listening to this program, listening to my program, Thrive Loud, so that you can actually 
like that shameless plug I was throwing in the middle of this. We were talking about the book. I had to, you know, do it that way. I wasn't, I don't, because this might be on my own. I may have to make this my own show at this point. You're welcome to have it. (laughs) Uh, Think about the gifts that were given with all that information, all this incredible nuggets and these wonderful people. And it was in that, that I recognized, I got to tell people about this. And I figured out the methodology and I worked on it. And oh my God, did I work on it? I really started to take all the lessons of the stuff that I speak about and do workshops with clients with the goal. Like you made a comment, connect, engage, and win to to Strickland's point earlier. There is a business component to this that you can utilize these conversations to close business, to engage with clients, to to win the deal you want to. And that's really where my head was at because that's the business podcast component or the business mind of mine. But there was not one of these chapters that you could not use in your own way to help with a relationship, to help with um, with dating. And I'm and by the way, it also was much more pitchable to television <laughs> networks. Just to be clear, when you could talk about resolving the family conversations and the challenges there, and and with that, um, first of all, it I have never been more proud of producing a piece of content than than putting this thing out because I actually like the best thing is my wife Janet read it. And and I would not let her read it until it was fully edited and fully done and all that. And I was like nervous. I'm like, man, she better really like it because, you know, I I really like it. And she came back and she's like, this fucking is great. That's great. And, 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 and and the reason is, is that she had the eye of the, of the, of the listener and the reader who, who can connect to this content and say, these are really good things that everybody can, can benefit from. But in the same sense, it has a purpose. Just like you guys will have this conversation with your guests on your show. You want great content, but there is a purpose. They might be a client of yours in one day. And that's, and that's totally okay because that's life. That's business. That's speaking easy with everybody. Yeah. And I'd love to speak to the I in your, in your voice analogy, right? The yeah. identity. That can be a blessing and a curse, right? When you are getting up in front of an audience and you're speaking and you've got this captive audience of a hundred or a thousand or a couple thousand people, well, you're the guy that they're paying attention to and you can just run with it and do whatever you want with it. And of course, you've got to bring the energy and the charisma, but it can be a curse when you're a salesperson. If you're somebody selling business consulting and you're reaching out to a client and the first connection you have with them is that you are a salesman. Well, Mm -hmm. the context of you being a salesman changes the conversation because they're going to be on guard because they know you're going to try to sell them something and they may not give you honest conversation. And that's what I love about the podcasting medium is that it changes the identity. Doug is not a salesman when he's doing an interview. He is an interviewer and he is giving our audience to the guest. So, and I think this is important. I'm going to get, to, I have another thing about Doug, which is even more relevant to that example. Of the I'm not talking about me. It's my favorite we subject. Will, we will talk about you. <laughs> and that has to do with the fact that uh, he, your conversations is what, you, is what you have. That's what they connect with, right? When they're dealing with you guys, they, they don't think of you as a salesperson. In fact, right. when, and, and this is so ironic because the first sales training course I ever took was created by (laughs) that. Okay. And, and I found that to be just the most amazing thing because I looked back at some of that content and realized how much we've changed from back then to now and how the medium and our ability to be connected on all the ways that we are from, we have access to so much content and so much great content. And now we're able to use that content to help us educate that the conversation is way more important than this unknown way to learn how to sell or this unique method of how you get to the, what used to be called, right? The hard skills, the soft skills are the super skills today. And Doug is one of the best at it because believe it or not, he's likable. Well, at least to most listeners, I don't know about some, some, you know, I think like, like three people. (laughs) That's right. Oh, so everybody that listens to the show. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But, but that likability comes from knowing how to engage and bring all those connector voice things to every time you have a conversation, which is why you guys are actually interesting to listen to. Uh, by the way, I went back I, when I was doing some research, I was trying to find before the book became all about conversations. There was a part that was about listening. And I went to just pick a random episode of yours. Cause I said, you know, let me find two guys who are just talking about bullshit. And I'm like, see what's engaging about that. And of course it was a lady of Ima episode <laughs> where there was a technical difficulty and this doesn't happen that much anymore. I'm sure. But back in the old days, like, you know, 2017, when you did a podcast and you couldn't use the copy or zoom wasn't working or whatever, 
they'd put on the Lady of Ipanema music. And I freaking laughed my ass off. I said, this is actually more engaging than their own conversation. Wherever they're of talking course, about. <laughs> of course, of course it is. Um, I, I do want to let you guys know that you guys actually get a shout out in here. What? And yeah. what? Are you, you kidding? Do? Can, I, can I read it? Yeah, yeah, please do. All right. So um, I give like paragraph. I thank my clients. Uh, I think my, my, I have a speaker's mastermind group. I thank some family, but then I go my fellow podcasting brothers and sisters. There's a tremendous amount of people doing the world an invaluable service by helping others to connect with their voice through engaging conversations via their podcast programs. I applaud you all for living and breathing that essence of speakeasy every day. It would be unjust if I didn't give the proper kudos to Doug, JJ, Strick, Steve-O, Anna, and Christopher for helping me embrace <laughs> and thrive within this meeting. Oh, man. Nice. It's the whole family. That was really good. Anna, like Anna Nigren? Anna, yeah, well, Anna, 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 Anna if you team. look at, so Anna has been, let's give her a shout out. She has been integral in the design and look and feel of almost all the iterations of uh, Thrive Loud and all the social presence stuff that we did. And as you guys know, Christopher, the Thrive Loud intern reject, um, who became a pot <laughs> turnkey podcast, has helped to promote through social. So yeah, yeah, we can give them a shout out. Even JJ got a shout out. Yeah, that's, so. very, that's very cool. I'm sure that she will appreciate that. I think the book just arrived yesterday. I have not opened, the, uh, opened it up yet, but I know, that, uh, I know that it's arrived at the house. I used to remember the listeners need to know that, you know, it's a, they always call me the, the, the beta patient or the patient zero, whatever it was for all the pod, podcast works. And, and Strickland and I used to have these conversations and these were hysterical. Like we're trying, we lost an episode once because there was a problem. What was the platform we used to use before we used Zoom all the time? Zen, was it Zencaster? Oh, Zencaster, Zencaster, maybe. Yeah. So Zencaster had some kind of system crash and we couldn't get like one of these interviews. And this is actually ironic because Yesterday, the guest whose episode I lost is this woman who is an amazing speaker from Chicago. Her name is Stacy Hunky, who, by the way, yesterday was just inducted into the um, National Speaker Association's Hall of Fame. She nice. Just got the highest honor within it. Yes, cool. Which is pretty cool. Good timing. Um, but that was the episode. And I remembered I was, you remember how stressed we used to be about, oh my God, mm -hmm. we're not going to get the episode up and running. Yeah. I was freaking out. And Strickland and I are trying to figure out how to like backtrack the episode. And, and all of a sudden she called me up and she goes, you know, we could just have another conversation. <laughs> and I've been doing business, by the way, with Stacey for several years now. So uh, it's pretty cool stuff. So speaking he's, of which, did somebody, did somebody hit record? Is this actually recording? I, don't <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. Hey, hey, okay, wait. Good. So that's, that was my first interview with, with well, Doug. Well, right, guys, right, right. I, I, w and I tell this story Dallas. many, many times. It was, uh, we were at, uh, we were at a, I think uh, the C-suite conference. Ha Hazlitz, yep. Hazlitz yeah, conference. Jeffrey Hazlitt's conference or something. And we were in a conference room and this was the first opportunity I had, I think, to, to interview Lou. And I sit down at the table and I'm interviewing him. I've got the microphone. We keep passing back and forth or where he's got his, I got mine. We're, we're chatting. And I looked down and I noticed I fucking forgot to hit the record button. And we're probably 10 or 15 minutes into the talk. And I said, stop, stop, stop. I said, Lou. It was, said, it was no. radio gold was the only way I could describe <laughs> it. Was it. It was so good. Amazing. And it was so perfect for the environment. I, so, so take me back to that. And Lou, look, you're the catalyst for all of this. I'm not saying that we would not have a production business without you had jumping out and, and saying, hey, can you teach me how to do this? But it certainly made things a little bit easier for us to make a decision that we're going to go into the podcasting business. I literally had somebody that emailed me or called me or however we communicated. And you said, can you teach me how to do what you have done? And I said, I, I think I was pretty open. I said, I can. I have no idea how to charge you. And then we came up with a price or whatever. I think 500 bucks a month for six months for three grand. And we ended up doing this whole thing. And I'm thinking, I can't believe he's going to pay me. I, I really feel personally responsible for everything that's going to happen now. Man, how does it feel just to know that you were the part of something that, that, um, that the evolution of our business has been great over the last six years or so? I, I look back i mean and let's also think about how thankful we are <laughs> because of what happened in 2020 yeah uh, oh i gosh. would say between not only like podcasting indirectly set me up to do the virtual work that i was doing and i, I remembered i was doing it in yeah. 2018 2019 but like spotty uh you guys were definitely doing it more a lot of training and doing it you know remote but um not, I wasn't doing climb meetings. I was physically going and I remember doing you were going into the city like once a week or something yeah. like that. Right. Right. I remember that. So, so, so podcasting enabled me to grow my business, not just from all the listeners who 
who and a lot of the guests who became clients and then would hire me and our voice would get out there. Um, and now, as you guys know, it's, it's you know there's some some negatives to you know the, the what do they call it? You're a victim of your own success. I mean, Doug Strick, how many requests do we get every single day from oh my gosh. guests oh, to come crazy. on the program? I it's probably the, got 20 requests today I mean, alone to get on the show. And I'm like, oh my God. I mean, I love it because it's great. It gives me an opportunity to pick and choose who I'm going to put in that guest seat. But I looked at our schedule. I, can't, I don't even have a booking available in, until yeah. like November or December right now to get on my schedule. And, and we, we've, even, we've even found revenue ways to have guests on the program. So like the like podcast was a lost leader initially, and then it then it became actually a revenue source as it is for you guys. Uh, I think the thing that it was hard for me at first to, to consider you guys embrace this way faster than I did was calling myself a podcaster. Uh, I know this sounds weird, but like, you know, there's all these other, I mean, there's 60 million people that put the title speaker in their name, you know, like I'm a speaker in this, by the way, and I am a professional speaker. Yeah. I get paid to speak. So it's a component of who I am. So, uh, you know, I've got this speaker, author, podcaster thing and and I remembered not putting podcaster in there for a while. And when, when I asked uh, a good friend of mine, and he's been a pro- guest on your program too, Phil M. Jones, who wrote exactly what oh, to yeah. say. Amazing. Phil, Phil, and Phil is like, he's like my younger brother, but he's my older mentor. He's a freaking super, superstar, uh, he, Phil Jones. Who, by the way, is uh, Phil is at the top of the book. That is his quote, right? On nice. The, uh, oh, the nice. There. Way to go. Uh, if, I'll read it later. But anyway, so, uh, but Phil... Phil was the one, he says, when I first think of you, what do you think of? And this is like, you know, like, what are you famous for first versus what you are, you know, known for type of a thing, like what you do versus what you're known for. And he goes, when I first think of you, I was about to kill the Thrive Loud podcast about 150 episodes in because I wasn't seeing money. Oh my gosh. Like I wasn't really seeing money, uh, which is so ironic, but I loved it. I loved doing every interview. And then all of a sudden the people who were, previous guests were becoming clients or I was getting other work or I was getting recognition in certain ways. And, and Phil said to me, he goes, I think of podcasting, I think of you. And he goes, and I think of, this is not only the way for you to, to get your voice out there, but this is the way for you to be marketing all the aspects of your business. And maybe you need to think of it a little bit differently. And that was an absolute pivot point where I'm like, holy cow. And you could look at it. I would tell you, you, your clients who would sign up and work with turnkey, like at 150 episodes, I figured out how to make, really make money. It, well, that, make the, it quicker. That's the amazing yeah. thing is I, how many people do you see and strict you, you know, this better than I do. Cause you see the board and the people come and go that are on our client list. You know, how many people quit before they've even had an opportunity to oh. queue up in the right spot? You know, they're looking at 25, 30, even 50 episodes in. And I'm like, you're still in your freaking podcast diapers. You're not yep. even out of those diapers yet. How do you get them to not quit at that point? I, I think a lot of it, look, is you, first of all, you have to love it. And, and I, I do know, I had a, I had a good conversation uh, with Kendra Hall, who's an amazing speaker and she's, yeah, also she's a great. rock star. Yeah. She did a podcast where she got paid by a, another a publication and her podcast program was in there. And she did like two seasons, by the way, she interviewed some really famous A-list people, like really top, top stuff. Cause she's at a, a totally, yeah, she's theory. at a good, a huge level. And, uh, and she did it and then she was done with it. And I had a quick conversation. I go, did you like doing it? And she goes, it was a lot of work for her. It wasn't her core thing. It wasn't what she loved the most because she loves telling stories more than, you know, being an interviewer. And it's really interesting to me. I'm like always a student in this chair. I am really genuinely interested in what the person on the other end of the microphone is saying. I want to know what the heck makes them tick. And I'm, and I want to figure out how to get the best out of them because that is what I do every day. Well, think about the, diver- think yeah. about the diversity of the people in that guest seat too. I mean, like last oh. week I had somebody in the guest seat that her, her whole career is uh, in the estate sale business. So all she does is go to, you know, uh, garage funerals. sales and yard sales, basically, <laughs> you know, funerals, right. She hangs out at funerals, you know, and today I had an image consultant, you know, designer on my uh, uh, consultant on my, on my show. And I've had guys that have been, you know, the, the head of huge organizations. So you do get to have this really cool, that's the part that, that I want to say to Strickland something like, it, you know, th- it's so great to have these conversations. Now, you may not even be interested in having those conversations, Strick. I love having them because I'm like a third grader all at, you know, all over again. Every time somebody's sitting in that guest seat, 
I, I just love having those those talks. It's It feels like that's really the purpose, although I know the purpose of the podcast is to put more people on our client list. But like you said, I don't go at it with the intention of, well, that person's going to become a client. I just have a good that, conversation. Wait, so that's, that's the combination, right? The fine line combination in having conversations that connect is you need to connect with that person. And that has to be in itself something that's true. And then you try to find where the opportunity lies, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, before I came on on your program, I got interviewed by these these two cool guys, one in Charlotte, one in uh, Toronto. They have the the Builder podcast, Builder's podcast, Build, uh, Builder Nuggets, sorry, Builder Nuggets podcast. And they are providing the building community, construction companies, all of them. And they they all the guys that have to deal with that aspect of it phenomenal program of all this stuff. And they wanted to talk about like conversations in their world are essential because there's a lot of bad news going on in that oh, space, yeah. right? Things are delayed. The supply chain is backed up. You can't get windows for another seven months. I mean, this is like real issues and their platform has become a way for them to help navigate all of that stuff in that space. That, that's that's an incredible content for people to learn from. Oh, by the way, they end up recruiting people through their business and into their network for the other stuff they do. Right. We understand that this is a way to grow and market yourselves and your brand and your business. But don't underestimate that the content itself, the conversations, and that's why I wanted Strickland here too, your conversations, you guys talk about customer service shit all the time. And I don't even know if you know it. Like you, you literally talked about the bathroom at McDonald's like several years ago. And I was <laughs> like, I go, this is amazing. I go, they're making an absolute ridiculous situation into a learning lesson. And people are listening to your programs and thinking about it. And then they're discussing it or they might have a conversation or forward it on to someone else. That is powerful shit. And that just shows you how important these conversations are to our daily lives. We can't live without them. We need them. We actually need this stuff to keep us entertained, engaged, and and literally move, moving each day. So I, I think what's so funny is it's not just the interview and learning about somebody else. It's the bullshit conversation as well. It's just as important to us uh, because we're, we're learning something, even in the ridiculous things you guys talk about. You know, without, this, without this program, I would have no idea that there's a convenience store in the Midwest named the Come and Go. Come and Go. I mean, come, on. <laughs> come and Go. You didn't know that? Come and no, go. No. Never seen the come and go. Before. Is it? Did you think there was ever a point that those guys like didn't say we need to rebrand this? Like, or, <laughs> or is it? Or is it just because it was like such a bad name that you know we we need to keep it because why well, change it? You know. So, are you familiar with Bucky's out here yes. in in Texas? Like, Texas. I don't know that they're in any other states, but it's a big fucking gopher or something. A chipmunk. I don't even chipmunk. know what the hell he is, and it's just goofy. But people. Love it. I went to San Antonio the other week and I stopped at Bucky's on my way home. It is mobbed. I mean, this place is like the size of a grocery store and it is just absolutely mobbed. They had like 40 uh, tanks for for filling your, you know, 40 gas pumps. And (laughs) it's ridiculous. It's just crazy. People love Bucky's and it's just this big, stupid gopher or whatever he is. I don't know what he is. I think, I think it is a chipmunk sounds right. Do they like it? But what do they like it for? There's got to be a, what's the brand represent? Like, what are they? What do they represent? Their big thing, super clean bathrooms. Oh, really? That's the biggest thing they talk about. It's All like right. super clean bathrooms. Yeah. Hey, look, compared to that McDonald's bathroom or whatever it was that we were talking about a couple of years ago, I would love to be able to go in. You know, you go into a, a regular uh, gas station bathroom in any town USA. But do you really? Do you really go into a gas station bathroom? I'm, yes. I'm dead serious. Like I, I'm going to freaking pee in the woods before sometimes I'm going. Well, in like who look, knows? I, I do. I will go into a I will go into a bathroom in a in a um, in a gas station. But uh, but you're right. I think the cleanliness factor, if I could walk into a bathroom and know that I'm going to get un, un you know, every time I walk in, it's going to be the, uh, just a amazingly clean bathroom. I'm probably going to lean towards going more toward, and I would walk into the bathroom and make myself go just to see the cleanliness of the bathroom. So I want to tell you about a bathroom. Um, have you guys seen these like I, I forgot the name of the manufacturer, but it's from Japan. It's like these super toilets that like 
they give you like they heat up, they give you a massage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like it's, it's I like was a in a 20... hotel in Vegas yeah. recently, and they had that, like the bidet and the, the little warm all in one. Shit. Yeah, but like it's got a remote control, right? It yes. has the buttons that you can do. Your, this, do your this, I mean, like literally, this shit is amazing. I mean, it is absolutely <laughs> the greatest toilet bowl I've ever experienced. Yeah. But, but um, I, you know, I I don't think we're going to see one at McDonald's. But but who knows? Maybe so. We're, so we are representing the country at, at triangularly right now. So Lou, oh, yeah, you're right. in, where, where are you on the East? Where in New Jersey I'm, I'm, or New I'm, York? No, I'm in New York right now in Westchester, just outside of New York City. And you're in uh, Ohio and, and you're in Texas right now, right? Mm-hmm. Strickland, yeah, exactly. I got to tell you, when I went, and we'll talk about this more on uh, NGF after we, uh, after we stop recording here so that you and I can do the, our, our daily, con- our weekly constitutional. But um, the restaurants in the Austin airport are freaking amazing. Okay, right? I have, there's All more restaurants the than gates. All the food in Austin yeah, is amazing. Austin, I tell you, oh, I can, another I can. thing that's great in Austin, I could not believe the quality of the women in the airport. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, that's were, hot women. they were so good. So, <laughs> so I'm guessing JJ is out of town today. No, she's right? here. She's here. <laughs> I, no, Austin, I'm, I'm saying you, you have University like, of Texas. I mean, like, you have the University of Texas at Austin there. You've got, I mean, it's also like the tech hub. It's, and they have, and if you ever go to South by Southwest, which is insane when that stuff is going on, um, yeah, everybody's good looking there. I think yeah, that's Austin. It's it's like it's Strickland like Las in? Vegas Airport on a on a Friday when all the strippers are coming into town. From Los, from Los <laughs> exactly, it looks like every day. Uh, um, exactly. Yeah, the quality strippers are at the Austin Airport. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a good airport too. I mean, it's not it's not one of those huge airports like uh, Chicago or or New York Denver, or any of those. Oh my god! And it's not as small as uh, or Denver, right? It's not as small as Santa Barbara with my five gates that I have. They do. Have, By the way, that's a nice, but you're in a nice part of the, the world over there. That's like, I, that's like number two in the United States. I am like, not, I, love I am not complaining about our airport or the people that are in here. I'm just specifically talking about the quality of the airport, not only the people, but the restaurants overall. I mean, Strickland turned me on to this, uh, to this burrito ta- uh, ta- uh, taco deli, taco oh. deli, taco deli. They were, it was amazing. I w- it was amazing. I could not, I could not figure out where I was going to eat my next meal from. It was like, where am I going next? I want to go into every, I had, I had eight hours, six hours at the airport because I had a, a long, a long connecting I'm, flight. I'm, I'm, I'm noticing something here, by the way. I just noticed it that so, so Strick has like what I have, I get gray right here in the mm-hmm. beard, right on the chin. And I'm the exact D- opposite. Doug, no, Doug is the exact opposite. I was going to say right. that he's mm-hmm. gray on the cheeks, but not on the chin in this stat. It's kind of weird. That's yeah. Nice if I, one. if I let this go, maybe another week, I got about a week's growth on here. If I let it go another week, it will be exactly like Strickland's as long as his is, but the exact opposite. My face just turns completely white. It's mm-hmm. it's kind of funny. Like if you if you shaved your mustache and the chin area, you'd be like this weird white Amish or something. <laughs> I totally would be. <laughs> Bringing to you the the Jedediah and Strickland Bonner show. Right. I, I would need I, mine gets now is getting really it's getting grayish over here, and I used to, I used to keep it all the time. Now I just as you can tell I shave the whole thing, and this is pretty long. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 quite an, quite an effort actually. Too. All right, Lou, one more time, plug the book before we. Uh, how many are, how many minutes are we're about forty minutes in? We probably have given a, we, probably we given we, them enough. We kept any given them, I, I think we've given yeah. them enough. <laughs> Speak speakeasybook.com. pre orders available right now. I don't know when this episode is going to drop, but uh, September twenty seventh is when the book comes out. But you can pre order today. Speakeasybook.com, or you can go to Thrive thriveloud.com and that's where you can find all the stuff that I do with Thrive Loud and the Thrive Loud podcast. And if we can get our show notes writers together on this one, if you could just check the link in the show notes. No, just go to straight, just go to, to, to lose, <laughs> go to Lou's website. Go, just go, you can go to speakeasybook.com. That'll get everyone there. They'll all get to the same spot. Speakeasybook.com. That's a good link. So, so Lou, we got to turn the tables on you. What's your favorite movie? Oh, good. You know, what's so funny. I just got asked that question on another show. I, I will be consistent. Uh, Rocky. 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 Rocky is my favorite movie and there's there's good reasons for it. But it's the interestingly, the real reason I always loved it. And it wasn't until the Rocky Balboa movie, which was like, you know, the, th- that's the one where he came back to fight after like the George Foreman like thing. Um, and that's the one he gets into a fight with his older son. And he, he uses that expression, you know, that that life will knock you down. Nothing will hit you harder than life. It'll knock you down and keep you down. But it's not our ability to be knocked down. It's our ability to get up and keep moving forward that 
is what life is about and that's what winning is there it is you could play the music underneath you know i heard there's producers that can play that but thrive loud that's what thrives about and that's what i've never realized it, but that's really what rocky was always about the underdog all that listen to him it's still hummering it's pretty good but that's a good trombone, trombone. <laughs> and, and you must, you you must have been a dj know, you probably know the backstory of this too i don't know if, if doug if you know this you know sylvester doug, stallone, if it's about movies he does not no, know it. <laughs> no are you kidding me i'm yeah. still waiting sylvester to see et <laughs> wrote he wrote it in a weekend in a he weekend wrote the whole movie yeah and he took it to movie studios and he was a nobody at the time right, right? And, he, and the movie studios were like no 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 and and i think one or two of them said yeah we'd be interested in this but we're gonna f-. and he's like but i need to star in it and they were like you're a fucking nobody what are you no no and he held out and he's like i am not letting anybody this is my story and i'm gonna star in it wow. and i wrote it and, and sure and- enough and we are all it. better for it, no matter what. Yeah. So it's you know, I don't think I have any Steve O'Brien drops from Rocky. So wait, I, so that's so funny. So I don't know if we, I don't know if you know this, Doug, but um, so we both have procured Steve for his services to do to yeah. drops, and I'll share some with him. And you know, we'll say, "Do you have a quote on this?" Whatever it is, we're probably mm-hmm. going to get in trouble, with Steve here. Um, but. <laughs> His they're unbelievable. I just had him do a whole bunch of better off dead ones, which is yeah. like this, this random 80s movie. And they are hysterical. Uh, but you're right. There are no Rocky drops. But you know what I thought about? There's not a lot of Rocky like quotable things. That just yo, there Adrian. That are, uh, yo, Adrian. Right. Yeah. Yo, Adrian. Right. I mean, like, what else is there? You're right. 100%. You can get out of your locker, Rock. That's it. <laughs> hey, those, are, those are two really good ones that you just that you just came up with. That's good. I, mean, I think I've seen the movie enough times, but there are other movies. But that one is the one that will always be like, if that's on then that music, you're 100 percent right. Uh, you know, it starts playing. You're ready to run up those the are that art museum stairs or whatever mm-hmm. it is in Philly. Right. So, yep. All right, Lou, deliver that final line. Can you do it? Uh, I think I, you, yours or mine. Either one is fine. All right. Take us out of here, Steve. Isn't that what it is? <laughs> You're close. Steve, o, Steve O'Brien, take us out of here. There you go. There you you go. got it on that you one. Got it. <laughs> For Doug Strickland, the Nice Guys on Business podcast, I'm Steve O'Brien. Yo, bartender, Jobu needs a refill. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Check us out on the web at thriveloud.com and follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook at Thrive Loud. And check us out on the Good Pods app at Thrive Loud, where you can follow, listen, and connect directly to Lou and all of the Thrive Loud episodes. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.